What could be more worthy than death on the battlefield? Only death, in the name of the freedom of all mankind. But Uzumaki's work is not finished yet people like him are born once every thousand years. In this universe there is another world in need of a true hero, of whom it was deprived due to an oversight of the gods, and the restless Jinchuriki will go there along with his grumpy Bija. But a little surprise awaited them. Never mind, Kurama, we'll break through. Welcome to the channel. This is the new title where Naruto and the theme of Kurama save the world. I recommend you to subscribe to my boosty there come out every day Lemon Naruto, and you can also choose any fanfic and I'll vote it, thank you. Before you start watching, like and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy watching. Act 1 Chapter 1. War is over. It's hard to believe, but it's finally over. There is no more Madara, no more Akatsuki, no more Zetsu army, and the whole world could finally breathe a sigh of relief. The victory came at a great price more than half of the 70,000 shinobi fell. The villages were deserted, the military power of the states was greatly undermined. The spirit of unity and cohesion that the great war hero Naruto Uzumaki instilled in the hearts of everyone still kept people from rash actions. But nothing lasts forever a person always remains a person, and there were those who were again ready to destroy such a shaky world, pursuing their own personal motives. Only six months passed, and news reached the Hokage that followers of the destroyed Akatsuki criminal group had appeared, wanting to carry out the plan of the eternal Tsukiyomi, but this time using a much more mysterious force than the combined power of the Nine Bija. Ama no Hoko is a cyclopean tower made of an unknown metal, created so long ago that there was reason to believe that it was present in this world long before Rikudo appeared. The Sezuri scroll that activates her was stolen from Kanoha's secret vault. The best A and B fighters guarding him died under very strange circumstances there were no injuries on their bodies, and not a single known poison was found in their blood. Tsunade decided to take action since this power cannot be used for good, it must be destroyed. One after another, for Shinobi entered the office wearing massive khaki steel helmets with black stripes equipped with thick shock-absorbing lining and powerful long-range radio transmitters. Close cooperation with the country of iron made it possible to create truly advanced equipment for shinobi and significantly reduce personnel losses. The fighters were dressed in thick suits with high boots. The clothing was the same color as the helmets, perfectly camouflaging the warriors in almost any terrain. The Hokage ordered to prepare for a long-distance sortie so behind everyone there was a compact backpack made of rubberized fabric, filled with a week's supply of provisions and a double set of military equipment. Among the inconspicuous-looking elite Anbu fighters was the well-known hero of the Fourth Shinobi World War Uzumaki Naruto. Seeing him, Tsunade smiled faintly for the umpteenth time she had to shoulder a task that seemed impossible at first glance, and once again she did not experience the slightest doubt about his success. Listen to me carefully. Your task is to find and destroy everything that is in one way or another connected with Ama no Hoko. All shinobi not wearing identification marks found nearby are subject to total destruction. The approximate location of the target is square F14 on this map. The landmark is the oasis of Koru. It is big. You won't miss it. Yes, sir. Every single one of the fighters nodded, clicked their heels and walked out of the office immediately heading to the indicated place. Granny without me is like without hands. What an irony just as I was about to go on paid leave, I was sent on a mission again. The Jinchuriki grinned sadly. And you're glad to try, even if you objected for the sake of decency, Rag? Kubi barked and swung his clawed paw at the tired grate in front of his nose. Don't touch the seal, it gives me a migraine. Naruto muttered, rubbing his head tiredly. I'm sick of this cage, I've been moping here for a month now. Karama grumbled, looking with displeasure at the matted fur on his right paw. If you endure, you won't break. The Jinchuriki answered cheerfully. Ah well? Then you too will suffer. Kyubi bared his teeth angrily, lay down on his back end, with the methodicality of a pile driver, began to kick the steel grate. I'll catch up with you. Naruto muttered tiredly stopping in the middle of the road and walking away to the nearest tree. Yes, sir. The shinobi silently looked at each other and continued on their way. 
Their leader leaned his back against the tree trunk and entered the subconscious. Are you moping again, Karama? The soldier fearlessly walked between the bars and put his hand on Kyuubi's second hind paw, which was not busy destroying the gilded lattice. The fox shuddered in surprise and squatted down, looking carefully at his jinchuriki. Today you appeared here for the first time in a month. I'm bored, Ninetales admitted honestly. Well, I'm sorry, you know. Naruto wound up his favorite organ for the hundredth time. Yes, yes, service, we've already been through this. Ninetales waved his paw. Just wait a week, then I'll definitely take a vacation, and then we'll go to the mountains, I'll let you out, and you'll do whatever you want. So be it, I'll believe you, but look, if you deceive me, I'll hit this grill until your nose bleeds. The fox grinned sadistically and poked Naruto in the helmet with his claw. He unexpectedly fell into the water and laughed. Glad we found a compromise. Uzumaki returned to reality and rushed after his squad. I had to borrow a little chakra from the fox and use the bijou mode in order to catch up with the rest of the squad. But Kyuubi didn't mind he was already looking forward to a well-deserved vacation. The journey to the designated square took two days. There was a lake with a large island about a mile in diameter in the middle. Despite the Hokage's promise, nothing resembling an oasis was visible. It's good that one shinobi from the squad had the Byakugan. Seshi, search the area, the Jinchuriki commanded. The fighter with a white stripe on his helmet took a step forward, opened his visor, protecting against any genjutsu, and followed the commander's instructions. Byakugan. After a few seconds the man shuddered, gazed into the distance, and raised his voice. I see the goal. A large settlement with powerful stone fortifications. Protected by a class of visual barrier. Now there are about three hundred people there. Under the stone dome there is a huge clot of chakra. It resembles the Kyuubi's chakra. The mission will be more difficult than I expected. Uzumaki drawled and adjusted his helmet. Karama, any ideas? Naruto, as always in moments of confusion, turned to his wise companion. The dozing demon woke up and thoughtfully tapped his claws on the floor. My chakra cannot be here the pseudo Jinchuriki Sora lost it several years ago. Maybe they caught one of my brothers, the demon suggested. No, they are all sealed, and the Jinchuriki belong to the five great countries. If one of them were kidnapped, we would inevitably be informed about it now as peacetime, and everyone is trying to maintain a balance of power. Then I'm not your help, I'm sorry. The demon lowered his head on his crossed paws and began to wait for events to develop, tensely waving his wet tails, ready at any second to pump so much energy into his carrier that he would not be able to go to that place even if he wanted to. Light. Naruto looked thoughtfully into the distance for a few more seconds. His charges were already starting to look at each other excitedly when he finally gave the order. We will conduct reconnaissance in force, use the technique of mass destruction, remember. No one should survive. Yes, sir. The soldiers nodded to the commander and stepped aside. Karama, lend me your chakra. Naruto asked awkwardly at the end. Lend it, lend it, you never gave it back to me. The kitsune grumbled, but shared his strength. The jinchuriki became covered in golden chakra and held his hands out in front of him. A super-dense black ball of chakra began to form in the air. The Uzumaki ward stood in a circle nearby and pumped a huge clot of plasma created with the help of lightning, wind, and fire chakra. When the bijou bomb swelled to the size of a watermelon, and the clot was unlikely to fit into a chiraku, the chakra paws of the Jinchuriki placed the ball inside a yellowish formation resembling a miniature sun. With a pop, the plasma fell onto the surface of the ball, and it lit up like a real star, making a deafening ringing sound. The ANBU stood behind the commander and, having collected a significant part of their chakra in their palms, sharply pushed the bomb with their hands. Announcing the area with a bone-chilling ringing, the ball at great speed rushed towards a camouflaged oasis located three kilometers from the fighters. Naruto waved his hand in Yerite, who wielded the Dotan, slammed his palms onto the ground, creating a meter-thick semicircular stone wall in front of the ANBU. The charge has detonated. The master of Dotan informed those present, feeling how his native element began to shake under his feet. The oasis, along with three hundred Nukneen, 
simply ceased to exist, turning into plasma from the hellish heat. The attack happened completely suddenly. No one even had time to realize what was happening, let alone take action. The visible space was flooded with all penetrating light. Despite the fact that it was only reflected from a distant mountain range, the shadowed visors could not prevent the fighter's eyes from having to squint. Next came a powerful underground shock, throwing people up a good couple of meters. The ear numbing roar was growing, a shock wave was approaching. Yeah, right, strengthen the wall. The captain ordered with alarm in his voice, usually such protection was sufficient with a reserve, but this time everything went a little wrong. The ANBU pressed his palms against the wall and imbued it with chakra. A terrible blow struck the barrier, the monolithic rock split and began to crack. Trees behind the ANBU were uprooted, and the high pressure front was followed by rock fragments flying from the center of the explosion. One of them hit the wall breaking through it and flying half a meter from the Jinchuriki's nose. Idiot, lie down on the ground, you will kill both yourself and me. Chubi barked, hitting the metal grate with his claws for warning. The Uzumaki followed the advice of his bija and sprawled on the ground. His charges followed suit, except for Yarite, who had to support the wall. Five seconds later the roar began to subside and the pressure on the defense was reduced to a minimum. The man removed his palms from the wall and sighed with relief. Phew, I think you're done. Yaride's voice was drowned out by a piercing roar. The captain looked out from behind the wall and froze in shock, and his charges did the same. What kind of creature is this? Seshi barked. In the middle of the crater, a hundred meters deep and five hundred meters in diameter, sat a pitch-black, ten-headed monster. Karama, any ideas? The Jinchuriki again turned to his furry encyclopedia. It looks like this ugly thing was hiding in Ama no Hoko. The Ninetales said tensely, closely studying the enemy through the eyes of its host. Repeat the salvo. The Jinchuriki commanded nervously. The ANBU loaded the bomb again and sent it towards the enemy. The roar gave way to a piercing squeal. The wall almost collapsed, but protected the fighters. It's useless. Naruto barked the creature not only survived, but was also approaching them at great speed. Let me out, I'll eat her like Dango. Ninetales barked too cheerfully. You are sure? You might get hurt. Naruto asked worriedly the last thing in the world he wanted was for his best friend to be torn to pieces. I'm Kyubi no Yoko, I'll hurt whoever you want. The fox answered, convincing himself rather. Well, it's up to you. Naruto shrugged his shoulders after all, Kurama will have more brains than him, and he knows exactly what he's doing. Surround him and hit him at the base of his neck. I'll call on the QB, and we'll divert attention to ourselves. The captain addressed his charges. Yes, sir. The ANBU fled in different directions, Naruto remained in place. The Jinchuriki took off his glove, made the seals, pierced his finger, and slammed his palm on the ground. With a deafening pop, Karama appeared in a cloud of white smoke. The fox carefully took the Jinchuriki into his palm and placed it between his ears. Well, brother, let's show this rubbish what kind of stuff we are made of. Naruto encouraged the nine tails. Kyubi roared and rushed into close combat. The Hydra tried to bite the enemy with all ten jaws, but the bushy tails wrapped around their heads and prevented them from moving. Karama grabbed the monster's chest with his fangs and began to tear apart the strongest muscles of the disgusting creature. Flashes of useless fireballs from the rest of the ANBU flickered around the fox's muzzle, distracting the demon from the insanely difficult confrontation. Calm down your banderlogs, I don't see anything! The demon howled. Naruto immediately pressed the intercom button and addressed his team. Retreat and wait for me in Hacho no Sato! You are useless in this fight. The Jinchuriki barked into the transmitter. Yes, sir. The out-of-breath soldiers answered in one voice and ran away from the battlefield. Kyubi was rapidly losing ground. The Hydra's necks were stronger than its tails. Within a couple of minutes, the Hydra reached the Kitsune. The razor-sharp fangs easily pierced the thick hide, going deep into the stone-hard flesh of the Bijou. Karama howled in pain but this was only the beginning crimson rays of energy burst out from the monster's throats, incinerating the fox alive. 
QB unclenched his jaw and screamed, feeling his internal organs turn to ash. Karama, no! Naruto reacted in a split second and called the demon away without thinking about himself at all. Damn. Was all the Jinchuriki managed to say before his body was hit by a scarlet beam and disintegrated into atoms. The next moment, a huge black carcass collapsed to the ground, dying from its injuries. The soldiers did not wait for their commander and returned to the battlefield. Seeing the corpse of the monster there and not reaching Naruto on the radio, they made a logical conclusion and took off their helmets in a moment of silence, after which they went to the Hokage with a report on the completed mission. This world was saved at the cost of the lives of the greatest hero of all time Uzumaki Naruto and his equally great companion Kurama. Act 1 Chapter 2 Dot The wet fat man was lying unconscious on the tiled floor in the bathroom. It would be funny if it weren't so sad Naruto was taking a shower and dropped the soap. Bending down after him, the guy slipped. Rushing out of the bathroom with a scream, Naruto hit his head hard on the cold ceramic. Pain. Dull aching pain in the back of the head. Where? I was sprayed into atoms. I think I feel cold. The cold of death, perhaps? But why only under the ass? I didn't think that Shinigami had such predilections. Thoughts rolled like heavy granite blocks in Naruto's consciousness, exhausted by interworld transfer. What the hell is this? There was an indignant squeak in the head of the Jinchuriki. It's not at all like angelic singing. The Jinchuriki opened his eyes and stared in bewilderment at the lone light bulb hanging from the whitewashed ceiling on a short wire. Somehow it's very different from heaven. He thought. What is happening to me? The panic-filled squeak in Naruto's head was repeated, echoing with a dull pain in the brain, making its owner wince painfully. But Uzumaki did not recognize the voice otherwise he would have immediately understood what was happening. The Jinchuriki raised his head and hissed in pain. When Naruto saw his body, he froze in shock it did not at all resemble the muscular torso of the young ANBU captain. Fat, loose, flabby, its appearance alone evoked disgust. The Jinchuriki looked at his ample belly and cursed loudly. Naruto, run to me. There was a demanding squeak in the Jinchuriki's head. Who else are you? Uzumaki asked in bewilderment, who could not even imagine that the bone-chilling base of the Nine Tails could turn into the voice of a fairy from children's cartoons. Tsunade's left tit, Madara, fuck you. Kyubi, who else? The demon was indignant. Naruto, without further questioning, moved into the subconscious, throwing his buzzing head back to the floor. The meeting between the Jinchuriki and his bijou was unforgettable they had never seen such nonsense in their worst nightmares. Karama was the size of a kitten, only twice as fluffy. The Jinchuriki reminded him of Choji, a completely naked Choji. Kyubi whined hungrily controlling his instincts had cost him enormous efforts his body, deprived of almost all chakra reserves, urgently needed food. What a tiny one. Uzumaki drawled in fascination unable to resist the emotion that washed over him. The Jinchuriki has always been partial to animals and would have long ago gotten himself a pet if it weren't for the categorical disagreement of the Nine Tails. Now the fox was the cutest creature in the world, which made Naruto want to touch it. The guy's voice brought Kurama out of his stupor. He only managed to open his mouth when Naruto grabbed him in his arms and began to squeeze him. So fluffy, so soft. The Jinchuriki rubbed his face against the muzzle of the hovering Kyubi, after which he realized what was happening and flew into an uncontrollable rage. Brutal hunger took over the usually phlegmatic demon, lulling his mind and giving control over his body to his instincts. And the instincts demanded only one thing to eat. With a loud bang, the tiny bijou expanded to the size of an ordinary fox, grabbed Naruto's shoulder with its fangs and began tearing a piece of meat out of him. The Jinchuriki howled in pain and with great difficulty unclenched the jaws of the demon, who was now clinging to his fingers. The guy pressed the fox against the bars several times and threw the kitsune into the wall with all his might. The demon rose to his paws, whining quietly from pain throughout his body. Running to the opposite corner of the cage, Naruto pressed his hand over the wound on his shoulder and glanced cautiously towards his friend who had gone off the rails. The picture before the fox's eyes blurred he had a concussion. 
When he focused his gaze and saw the bloody Jinchuriki dropping scarlet drops into the cold water, the demon's entire insides clenched in horror. The kitsune rushed towards Naruto, but he frowned sternly and held out his injured limb in front of him, clearly intending to fight. Naruto, I didn't do it on purpose, my instincts got the better of me. I swear to Shinigami, I will heal you this very second, and this will never happen again. Kyuubi looked at the floor in confusion. The Jinchuriki looked at the guilty demon with a wary look, but then lowered his fists. Okay, I believe you, but be kind, keep yourself in your paws. Naruto winced in pain even though he was used to enduring it, the feeling was still not pleasant. The fox slowly walked towards the guy, staggering from side to side, and fell on his side a few steps from the guy. The Jinchuriki cursed and ran up to him, but the demon rose to his trembling paws and looked at the Uzumaki with a martyr's muzzle. Naruto realized that he had hit Kurama too hard, but what could he do? Let the demon eat him? Sorry, the Jinchuriki muttered without enthusiasm, feeling like he was losing precious blood. No, no, it's my own fault. Give me your hand, said the fox, sitting down in the water. The Jinchuriki extended his tattered fingers to the bijou and stared at him warily. The fox swallowed convulsively, his nostrils flaring from the smell of blood, but he was able to control himself and lowered his paws, glowing with scarlet chakra, onto the wound. Naruto immediately felt a relaxing warmth, drowning out the unpleasant tickling sensation. Within a few seconds Naruto's palm was in perfect order, then the fox began to work on his torn shoulder cursing himself for his weakness of spirit. At the end of the treatment, the demon recovered his brains, collapsed into the water and whined pitifully he already had almost no chakra, and now he had used all of it, having slightly decreased in size, having spent the minimum necessary to maintain them. The worried Jinchuriki helped the fox sit up and brought him to his senses by scratching the bijou behind the ear. Naruto, forgive me. I swear this will never happen again the fox blurted out. It's okay, it doesn't matter now. Can you get any bigger, or is that all you can do? The guy asked, measuring the demon's height between his palms. Looks like that's all. I feel like a helpless cub. The fox complained to his only comrade in misfortune. Do you think I'm better? Just look at me I'm a fat young hog. Naruto nervously poked himself in the stomach with a finger. Well, I can't say that it was that bad. The fox licked his lips and fixed his hungry gaze on the fat man, trying to somehow stir up the jinchuriki. Not funny, Naruto muttered. And for me, very much so. The fox answered and laughed, poking the guy in the shoulder with his clawed paw. The jinchuriki grinned wickedly and scratched the demon behind the ear, causing him to fall into the water and purr softly. I didn't know that you had so much in common with simple animals, Naruto said smiling wider and wider. How could you not smile if the great and terrible Bijou stuck out his tongue and squinted his eyes with pleasure? The demon perked up and jumped to his paws, pushing away the Jinchuriki's hand and arrogantly puffing himself up, making the Uzumaki laugh even more, driving away all thoughts of despair from him. Well, we laughed and that's enough. We must find out what we are capable of at the moment. The Jinchuriki rose to his feet and tried to charge the Raisingan, but found that his chakra reserve was ten times less than necessary. Naruto went cold, his hands trembled he could not use his main fighting technique, on which almost all the others were based. That is, without her he was completely helpless. Karama, I can't even charge a Rasengan. Kyuubi got closer, looked at the empty palm turned to the ceiling, without the slightest breath of chakra, and shook his head. What if? Uzumaki folded the seals and a lone clone appeared in front of him, immediately collapsing into the water like a broken doll, and Naruto himself almost went after him from the fatigue that had fallen on him. Kyuubi whined and covered his eyes with his paw. Naruto's jaw trembled, he could not perform the technique that had been his calling card since childhood. That technology without which he could not imagine his life. At least this. The Jinchuriki folded his fingers into a ring and blew out a fireball the size of a tangerine, flying three meters and dissipating in a cloud of smoke. Naruto fell to his knees and put his head in his hands. 
the fat man's body shook with small tremors he was an ordinary child who did not even have basic shinobi skills. His entire previous life was in vain, all his achievements were an empty phrase in this world. Maybe it was just a dream and he was never the hero of the fourth shinobi world war? No, that's impossible, otherwise Kyuubi wouldn't be aware. I'm useless, why should Kurama suffer because of me? He deserved forgiveness long ago, and I deserved eternal rest in the chambers of the Shinigami. I'll kill two birds with one stone. Uzumaki thought gloomily. Kurama, let me let you out. The Jinchuriki rose to his feet and walked towards the seal with a stone face. Hey, 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 what did you think of that? The fox covered the distance to the bars in one jump and blocked the Jinchuriki's path. I'm a worthless piece of meat. You're right to attack me. I'm not worthy of the right to be called a shinobi. Naruto, are you sick or are you faking it? The fox was worried about what was happening. It was the first time he had seen his Jinchuriki in such a state. He urgently needed to cheer him up. Freedom is a tempting offer. But he's my friend. I can't let him die so stupidly after everything he's done. Thought the fox, frowning sternly and preparing to defend the bars until his last breath. I am a terminally obese ANBU captain who cannot breathe out a fireball. Uzumaki blurted out angrily. And I'm an ordinary fox that a simple peasant can lift with a pitchfork. What should I do now, rip my own throat out? Kurama himself was not in the best mood. He had never been so tiny before. The power that had been painstakingly collected for centuries had disappeared without a trace. Naruto sighed heavily and sat down in the water. Kyuubi lay down in front of him and fluffed his tails behind his back. Thanks for the support, brother. Sorry for falling apart. The Jinchuriki put his hand on the fox's wet back and smiled forcefully. No problem. Just be kind. Don't joke with the seal I might not be able to restrain myself next time. The demon sighed sadly, realizing that he would have to sit locked up for a very long time. It won't happen again, Kurama. Thank you for your patience. After being silent for a couple more minutes and playing staring contest with the fox, Naruto could not resist and smiled well. It was impossible not to laugh at the sight of those ears. Let's look for the positive sides and everything we will have a chance to save our dead friends and strangle Akatsuki in the bud. The Jinchuriki said exaggeratedly cheerfully. Are you sure that your friends and Akatsuki are here at all? Without sharing his friend's optimism, the demon muttered. No. The guy thoughtfully scratched the back of his head and looked at the demon, expecting him to once again tell him what to do in a hopeless situation. The fox sighed heavily and shook his head without him Naruto would not have become an ANBU captain or a jonin. He spoiled him. I suggest not using your favorite reconnaissance in force for now and find out all the information before cutting from the shoulder said the demon and put his head on his crossed paws, looking longingly at the water, which only covered the stone floor by a centimeter, signaling his Jinchuriki's meager chakra reserves. Kurama, thank you. I don't know how to thank you, Naruto said, stroking the demon's back. The fox grinned and snorted cheerfully. Don't give up and don't forget about me. I don't need more from you. I hear a knock on the door. I think you need to go. The demon looked at his friend with concern. Yes, sir. The encouraged Jinchuriki moved to reality, where the door was cracking from a hail of blows that fell on it. The Jinchuriki glanced suspiciously at the door, not knowing how to answer the stranger without attracting too much attention. Nisan, open up, you're not alone in the house. A boyish squeal was heard. Nisan? I have a brother. Maybe there are parents, too. Uzumaki said with hidden hope in his voice. It's possible. Let's get dressed, judging by the screams. You've been here for a long time. Damn, there's blood all over here. The Jinchuriki stared in horror at the puddle of scarlet liquid that had soaked the foot towel and spread across the tiled floor. I'm coming now. Naruto shouted, grabbing a towel and wiping the marks, hastily washing off the blood in the bathroom. Kurama whined bashfully all the damage that Naruto received in the subconscious, his body received in reality, therefore all this bedlam is his doing. After a couple of minutes the floor was clean, but wet, and Naruto was breathing heavily from the excessive physical exertion for his flabby body. Nisan, I'm late. 
A squeaky boyish voice rang out, and the knock on the door was repeated. Naruto quickly pulled on the black shorts hanging on the hook with a blue t-shirt, and, after praying to all the gods, took hold of the gold-plated handle. The Jinchuriki opened the door and was immediately pushed aside by a disheveled boy of about eight years old with dark red hair, glaring angrily at the fat boy and pushing him out of the shower. A few seconds later, the rustling of water was heard outside the door, and the Jinchuriki, swaying from the resulting shock and every now and then bumping into walls covered with green wallpaper with white camellias, set out to explore the unfamiliar world. A blonde girl of the same age as him with two ponytails and the same sky-blue eyes as Naruto pulled out towards him from around the turn onto the flight of stairs. Despite her youth, the girl was distinguished by very, very outstanding virtues, refined facial features and, as it turned out, a terribly bad character. Rump, your mother is looking for you everywhere. Go to the kitchen. The sister barked and walked further, pushing her chubby little brother aside. Rump? I'm a hero of the Fourth World War. I defeated Jubi, killed Madara with my own hands, and after that some brat calls me a rump? Humble yourselves, in this world you are just a child. The fox answered gloomily. The hell with it. Naruto, still reeling from the stress of his death, seethed with anger. Whore! The fat man barked, looking at the stranger defiantly. The girl froze with her leg raised and slowly turned around, blushing with rage. I'll rip your head off, you piece of fat. The girl bared her teeth angrily and rushed into hand-to-hand -hand combat. Naruto got into a fighting stance and tried to use his old tricks, but only twisted his ankle and fell to the floor, howling throughout the house in pain. Then the girl, offended in her best feelings, arrived and kicked her brother in the ribs three times, after which she sat on his chest and began to methodically turn his face into a bluish mess. Kurama wanted to laugh but realized that Naruto was almost sobbing in despair at that moment. The ANBU captain was on the verge of a breakdown he couldn't cope with a 13-year-old girl, Nigai. A sonorous soprano rang out behind the girl, after which she was pulled away by the scruff of the neck by a tall, busted charmer of about 16 with long scarlet hair gathered in a ponytail, framing a chiseled face with delicate milky white skin, without a single flaw. The gaze was drawn to itself by the bottomless eyes of a rare amber shade, at the moment full of righteous anger. The coral sponges were compressed into a narrow strip the youngest was planning a long and painful showdown for dinner today. Mommy, let him go, he called names. Bark Nagai, who was breaking away from the tenacious grip of her older sister. Even if that's the case, even though I hardly believe it, is that a reason to turn him into a chop? Nigai. I'm starting to doubt your adequacy. He hasn't hurt a fly in his entire life. In the end, he is your brother, and you are acting like a drunken Tsunade. The girl grimaced contemptuously, remembering her violent relative. You will have a serious conversation with your parents. Free. Mom unclenched her fingers and her sister stood on the floor. The mop is freckled, Nigai whispered quietly, for which she received a mighty slap and, flying over her brother, ran away in tears. The youngest, who had taken a shower, walked out of the bathroom, smiling contentedly, and was thrown back by his angry sister. Well, Kanjen also got caught. Naruto, are you okay? The Kunochi looked worriedly at her brother. He literally devoured her with his eyes, but was able to look away. Naruto, she's your sister. The demon was indignant with reproach in his voice feeling the carnal attraction of his jinchuriki. That doesn't make her ugly, the jinchuriki answered, not at all embarrassed by his lustful thoughts. She is ugly there is only fur on her head, no tail, small claws and fangs, ears that make chickens laugh. The demon began to list the main, in his opinion, shortcomings of the girl. What do you understand about women? The jinchuriki snorted mockingly. Kyuubi frowned offendedly and fell silent leaving Naruto alone with his thoughts. The girl squatted down and shook her head. Well, why did you go after her? She's crazy, I forgot. Now you have a concussion and a dislocation. The Kunoichi carefully took her brother in her arms and carried her to the emergency room. Naruto fell silent in shock his older sister really loved him. At least something good. He thought. Thank you, Momoka. 
The kunoichi raised her eyebrow in surprise, but then broke into a wide smile. Usually her brother did not speak at all this was largely due to Nagaya, who, despite any punishment, continued to beat him. You're welcome, brother. Be smart and don't get into trouble. This is a very useful skill that you will need more than once. Momoka smiled softly and looked into the distance. Along the way, the Jinchuriki turned his head 360 degrees. The village was not very different from its counterpart from the parallel universe, but the Uzumaki's gaze caught on a completely functioning Uchiha police department, several of whose representatives walked past one after another. Naruto felt the dark anger of the Ninetales the demon hated the Uchiha with all its being. Are you still mad about that incident with Madara? Naruto asked. Those red-eyed brats. They can all control me, not just Madara, and I don't like it. The kitsune growled darkly. You don't have to be an Uchiha for this a simple village man can finish us both off with a couple of kicks. Naruto sighed heavily, and the fox was overcome by such despair that it was instantly transmitted to his Jinchuriki. Don't panic ahead of time. As long as I'm alive, no one will touch you, and we will definitely find a way to become stronger. Naruto encouraged his partner, wincing in pain all over his body. Thank you, the demon said quietly, curling up and covering himself with his fluffy tails. The hospital was quite impressive, clearly surpassing in size the equivalent of Naruto's home world. On one wing was the symbol of the Uzumaki clan, which attracted the attention of the Jinchuriki. I doubt my family was given a whole wing, the guy muttered thoughtfully. And look there. The demon took control of Uzumaki's eyes, and the latter fell silent in shock fifteen people in white coats, with scarlet hair walked along the street and entered the building. How many of them are there? Naruto exclaimed in amazement now he certainly won't have to worry about the population of his own clan. Damn jailers, how I hate them. As soon as the fox had calmed down, he roared angrily again. Calm down, Kurama. The Jinchuriki exhaled tiredly, tired of listening to the angry. RRR. The fox fell silent and closed his eyes, imagining how good it would be to devour all these clan freaks and thereby clearly demonstrate to them what it means to be in a hopeless situation. Naruto, as the son of the Hokage, was placed in a single luxury ward. Mommy kissed him and wished him a speedy recovery after which she went home. The doctor was a young man of average height with sparse olive hair and pale gray eyes. My name is Mamoru. I am your attending physician. The doctor introduced himself and made a slight half-bow. Hello, my name is... Come on, everyone knows your name, Naruto. The doctor laughed. You'll have to lie here for a couple of days before your ankle gets stronger. Here's a button to call a nurse. Just don't play around. Otherwise our girls can kick you in the teeth. Good luck to you. Get well soon. The doctor left the office and closed the door behind him. The Jinchuriki felt his face swollen from bruises and disbelief and groaned in pain. Poor thing. The demon sighed sympathetically. We will survive this trouble. What do you think about the current situation? Uzumaki asked. What is there to think about after death? We were thrown into another world along with the seal. Local you are a downtrodden quiet guy who can't handle a girl. The damned Uchihas and Uzumakis are alive here, which I hope to correct soon. You have a brother and two sisters, and your parents. Then the door flew off its hinges and an angry Kushina appeared on the threshold in tight knee-length mesh shorts and a fitted green vest. The Jinchuriki ran up to her son and took his face in her hands. My little bunny, are you okay? Asked the concerned woman. And mom? Naruto froze, he always dreamed of motherly love, and here it is, in all its glory. The captain didn't even know what to do in this situation. Kushina hugged her son and sat down on the bed next to him. I promise, Nagai will be punished with all severity. The woman frowned angrily. No, don't, it's my fault I insulted her. Naruto hastened to cover for his unlucky sister he was ready to endure any bullying, as long as there was always someone close to him. The mother's face fell such a long sentence from the mouth of the usually shy son was incredibly rare. This is not a reason to send you to the hospital. She's already let herself go beyond measure. This time I won't let her down. 
The kunoichi crunched her fingers meaningfully. The jinchuriki smiled lightly, but his soul was rejoicing at that moment even if his younger brother and sister hated him, his elder brother loved him. And there's nothing to say about the mother, if the local Naruto is an only child, fat as a hog. After hugging Kushina and being silent for a couple of seconds, Naruto pulled away and looked at his still frowning mother. Tell me, how is father? Uzumaki always admired the Yandame. He imitated him throughout his life and dreamed of one day taking his place. He could only hope that in this world he would be able to accomplish his plans. The same as always sitting with his papers in a dusty residence, talking verbiage with the elders and yelling at the shinobi. His son is in the hospital, and he still didn't deign to tear his crown ass off the chair and check on you. Kushina slammed her fist into the wall, knocking out chalk chips from it and leaving a cracked spot. Naruto swallowed in fear Nigai's character was inherited from his mother. Thank you for checking on me, but the doctor said that I need to sleep. The Jinchuriki needed to think about the current situation, and in the presence of a raging mother it was difficult to do this. Of course, son, get well soon, the final exam is coming, you can't skip it. Bloody Habanero kissed her son on the forehead and left the room, putting the door back in place. You won't wish your family on your enemy. Nine Tails expressed his opinion. At least none of them have tried to eat me yet, the Jinchuriki retorted. The Kitsune fell silent in shame, and was just about to apologize when the door collapsed to the floor. A shock doctor stood on the threshold with a tablet in his hands. Young man, explain yourself. The doctor barked. Act 1 Chapter 3 My mother came to me, she knocked down the door. Naruto spread his arms and shook his head showing with all his appearance that he did not approve of his mother's behavior. Kushina-san. Okay, then it doesn't matter. The doctor shuddered and decided that insurance would pay for the repairs, and it was better not to bother the Hokage's wife about such trifles, or you might end up in the patient's place. How do you feel? asked the doctor. It's normal, the Jinchuriki answered, wanting to get rid of the presence of the annoying doctor, who was completely useless as soon as possible, because he had the best healer you could imagine Kurama. Kyubi, feeling the Uzumaki's warm emotions directed at him, purred with pleasure. Do you have any wishes? The health worker kindly asked. No, thank you, Naruto replied dryly. Then I wish you a speedy recovery and I'll hasten to take my leave. I have a lot to do. The doctor left the room, replaced the door, and went to the caretaker. Naruto, come here, I have some interesting thoughts, the demon said. The Jinchuriki chuckled and closed his eyes, moving into his subconscious. Kyubi beckoned him with his finger, closed his eyes and from quite a large fox turned into a small nine-tailed animal. Naruto, remembering Kyubi's previous reaction to caresses, approached him and skeptically examined the demon from all sides. Can you accept an intermediate state? For example become the size of a cat? I can't. Kurama grew to twenty centimeters at the withers. Uzumaki stroked his face. The fox purred and tilted his head to the side, but then became shy and pushed the guy's hand away. What is the mechanism of this transformation, and why couldn't you do it in that world? The captain turned on his brain, and with a serious look began to understand his friend's new ability. Here the chakra is more plastic and mobile. My body consists of it so I can compress it and shrink. What about unclamp and increase? Uzumaki asked curiously, who was misled by the new appearance of his friend. No, the body is losing stability, and I can die disintegrating into chakra. Karama again increased to the size of a fox, and then grew another few centimeters, but the contours of his body began to blur and exude a scarlet haze, after which the demon returned to its stable form. That's it. Can you become even smaller? Naruto asked thoughtfully. I can, but there is a limit if the density is too high, then I will explode like a bijou bomb. So, when you grow up, your minimum size will also increase? The guy asked. Exactly. Kyubi shook his head and fell silent for a couple of moments, after which he looked up at Naruto and asked the question that was tormenting him. Do you think you have the strength to summon little me? I don't know. We need to try. And if it works out, are you ready to be my pet? 
Naruto rolled his eyes dreamily, imagining how he would squeeze the little fox every day. Pito Omsum? Kyuubi drawled, throwing his head back thoughtfully. Naruto, have you gone crazy? The kitsun growled angrily but still. I promise, I will take good care of you a warm home and free food included. Uzumaki tried his luck again. I'll think about it, muttered the fox. Naruto smiled he didn't say. No. Which means he has a chance, you just need to call him. Then I will go to the real world and call you, like I did in that world. Naruto asked. Yes. The demon answered dryly. The Jinchuriki was transported to reality, made seals and bit his finger. The guy slapped the wall with his hand, and a fox the size of a cat fell out of it. Naruto caught the bijou and placed him on the bed. The demon snorted contemptuously and proudly threw back his muzzle, making it clear with his entire appearance that he did not intend to say, Thank you. You know, you even benefit from this move to a new world no one will find you if you remain so small and take away chakra after yourself, but this is sad, it's sad to tears. Naruto muttered, poking himself in the belly. Kyuubi looked guiltily into Uzumaki's eyes, but then grinned defiantly. Nonsense, you will eat less and everything will return to normal. I'm more interested in how I can eat up a hundred or two shinobi without anyone noticing. Uzumaki batted his eyes and picked his ear with his little finger. I'm sorry, what? The guy asked, hoping that he heard it right, and the cute fluffy fox was not going to become a cannibal. Do you think I will tolerate my helplessness? The demon asked. Are you completely crazy? I'm not involved in this. Moreover, I'm against... The Jinchuriki was indignant. Who's asking you? The demon roared fervently, waving his paw at his bearer. Naruto frowned menacingly and punched Kyuubi in the stomach. Ph. Okay, you'll agree anyway. The demon hissed through tightly clenched jaws. It was clear from the Uzumaki's face that the act of cruelty to animals could be repeated, so the fox hastened to change the subject. I'm more concerned about one detail. Your mother is the Jinchuriki of the local version of me, the demon said. So what? The Jinchuriki raised an eyebrow in confusion, but lowered his fists. He may not like my presence, and I can't even fight back you, let alone a bijou, the kitsune muttered darkly. I swear to Shinigami, I won't let you be hurt. The fat man poked the redhead in the forehead with two fingers. He wanted to laugh, but steel glinted in the Uzumaki's eyes. With the same confidence, he said that he would become Hokage. With the same confidence, he walked towards Zyobi. With the same confidence, he gave his life in the name of saving that world. Thank you. Kyuubi answered quietly and lay down on the Jinchuriki's stomach, resting his head on his paws. Well, then you need to make a training plan. Every day I get up at six in the morning and run for an hour around Kanoha, the same in the evening. I need to lose excess weight. The Jinchuriki began to plan a course of rehabilitation. So many calories are wasted. Kyuubi whined, shaking his muzzle from side to side. And you will be able to take a walk in the forest and hunt. What do you say to that? Uzumaki inquired slyly. And you will let me go? The fox narrowed his left eye in disbelief and stared with his right eye at the plump face of his Jinchuriki. I trust you and I know that you won't misbehave and attack our people. Kyuubi groaned and buried his nose in the blanket now he definitely won't be able to deceive him, otherwise he'll stop respecting himself. It's not fair. You can't put pressure on trust. The kitsune whined. What else? It's useless to threaten you, you'll grow up and eat me. Karama growled offendedly. Naruto laughed and scratched him behind the ear. The little fox purred contentedly again. This went on for a couple of minutes until Uzumaki remembered the reason for his being in the hospital. Karama, heal my black eyes, please, the Jinchuriki asked. No problem. The little fox immediately crawled closer to Naruto's face and put its paws on it, glowing with the scarlet light of chakra. After a couple of minutes there was no trace left of the bruises. Kyuubi went to the Jinchuriki's ankle and after a few minutes he healed it too. Arigato, Karama. The fat man exclaimed, squeezing the bijou in his arms. You're welcome, Naruto. The demon croaked. It was already dark outside the window, 
the Jinchuriki closed his eyes and began to snore quietly. Karama, having broken down a little, crawled under the blanket and pressed himself against Naruto's warm side. Waking up in the morning, Uzumaki was surprised to find a red-haired lump warming up under his side and carefully crawled out of bed. Having reached the toilet, which was in this room, and done his dirty work, Naruto thought that it would be nice to chew something. Having hobbled to the refrigerator, his legs still hurt, the Jinchuriki found several nutrition bars there and stealthily glancing at the fox, devoured them all, throwing the packaging into a nearby basket. Uzumaki climbed onto the bed and poked Kyuubi in the nose. He yapped offendedly and opened his eyes. If you do that again, I'll bite your finger off, said the demon, frowning menacingly. Well, sorry, I couldn't resist. The guy made excuses. The little fox stood up on all fours and stretched imposingly, yawning widely. Can you do something for me? Naruto asked. Mm hmm? You expanded my kirakukiya in that world with your chakra. Can you repeat this trick here? Uzumaki asked with hidden hope in his voice. Naruto, I've been doing this since you were born, hoping to kill you, constantly increasing the doses. As a result, the process proceeded gradually throughout your entire life. QB answered after a tense pause. Naruto's eyes widened in disbelief and Karama, it turns out, had been trying to kill him all his life. The fox noticed the boy's reaction and hastened to correct himself. After we became friends, I continued to infuse chakra, but with the goal of helping you. As if Fuji had fallen from the guy's soul, he sighed with relief and smiled. What is the problem now? Pour in as much as you like. I'll make sure the seal doesn't interfere. You will die if the dose is too high. I can speed up the process several times if you really don't interfere, but your reserve will not reach its previous value very, very soon. The little fox answered, sadly shaking his head. It doesn't matter. Apparently, there are two to six months left before the exam. Will you have time to make sure that I can summon at least a couple of clones? The guy asked. No problem. The kitsune replied. Arigato, buddy! exclaimed the jinchuriki, grinning defiantly. The fox smiled and put his paw in front of him. Naruto high-fived him and relaxed back on the bed. Suddenly the door began to fall. The little fox immediately slipped under the blanket and lay down next to the jinchuriki. My chipmunk! A broken female voice rang out, and a woman about fifty years old ran into the room flaunting gray strands of scarlet hair and a wicker basket covered with a waffle towel. There were minimal wrinkles on her face, and in principle she resembled the aged Kushina like two peas in a pod. The guest put the basket on the bed and went to kiss the Jinchuriki, but he pushed her away, saving Kyuubi from turning into Pade. The little fox immediately understood what was happening and quietly slipped to the other half of the bed. Ma'am, who are you? The Jinchuriki was confused. You don't recognize your grandmother? Damn Nagai. Well, I'll arrange it for her. How can you beat your own brother like that? The woman, who turned out to be a strong kunoichi, kicked the innocent bedside table and broke the door. The Uzumaki's eyes widened in surprise. The fox under the blanket quietly scratched his leg with its claws. The smell of meat coming from the basket drove the demon crazy. Grandma. Sorry, I was a little out of my mind. The Jinchuriki didn't even know what to say to the guest. He imagined how to communicate with his parents, but what should he do with his grandmother? I brought you pies with meat just the way you like. The woman proudly placed the basket on the Jinchuriki's lap and looked at him expectantly. The fox almost sobbed in despair and began to chew the mattress. Naruto, having guessed what they wanted from him, took out a pie, took a bite and chewed it thoughtfully. After a couple of seconds, he hummed with pleasure and pounced on the pastry. Grandma was happy since Naruto, as always, had a good appetite then everything was fine with him. The Jinchuriki took the fifth pie in his hand, but overcame himself and put it back in the basket the culprit of obesity had been found, and it was necessary to fight it. Judging by the fuss under the blanket, he will have an excellent assistant in this difficult task. Well, tell me, how are things at the academy? The woman asked. Um, it's okay, ba. Uzumaki drawled, leaning back on the bed. Does that bastard Kiba hurt you? Just tell me, 
and I will instantly put him in his place. Naruto imagined this picture, made an unhappy face, imagining how the local Uzumaki must have disgraced himself more than once, and shook his head. The fox under the blanket could hardly restrain the laughter bursting out. No, everything is great. Better tell me how Grandpa is doing? The Jinchuriki immediately mentally hit himself in the face with his palm if his grandfather died, then his disguise would come to an end. Hanging around with that old alcoholic Jiraiya, as always. This time they went fishing. The boy grunted he knew this. Fishing. Where a size starting from the fourth was considered a good catch. After chatting about this and that and driving the fox into a frenzy, the grandson and grandmother said goodbye. The woman installed the door in place and went to give Minato a dressing down for the disgusting upbringing of his youngest daughter. Kurama immediately jumped out from under the blanket, grabbed the towel with his teeth and threw it to the side. Don't you want to become bigger? I doubt you can eat everything in this form. Are you giving them to me? The fox, who grabbed the pie in his jaws, stunnedly put it back in its place. Yes, Naruto replied, smiling widely. Thank you. Tears flowed from Kyuubi's eyes, and he hugged his jinchuriki. He was surprised to note the metamorphoses that had happened to the fox the fingers on his paws became much longer, and the paws themselves were more reminiscent of human hands. That is, the kid soon became what he was before. Kurama, so you can not only change the size, but also the shape of your body? Naruto asked the demon, who was already heading towards the basket. Uniform? The fox asked in bewilderment, and then looked at his paw and froze in shock everything happened involuntarily, without his knowledge. It looks like that, the fox said thoughtfully, sitting down on the blanket and beginning to closely examine his own body, which had taken on a humanoid form. Excellent, it will be much easier for us to hide your origin, exclaimed the Jinchuriki. Kyuubi nodded but then his gaze caught on the basket that completely occupied his entire consciousness. Kurama grew to the size of a large dog, jumped behind the bed, hiding him from the eyes of visitors, put the basket on the floor and gave vent to his brutal hunger, not even bothering to chew the treat, swallowing the pastry whole. Naruto looked stunned at the quickly flashing paws of the Kyuubi and the food disappearing into the bottomless throat of the bija at the speed of light and thoughtfully scratched the top of his head where does he get into it. After a couple of minutes, fifty pies rested in the fox's belly, swollen to the size of a football, and Kurama leaned back, blissfully closing his eyes and drooling from his open mouth, his tongue hanging to his side. Hey Kurama, are you okay? The Jinchuriki asked worriedly, to whom the picture looked as if the fox had died from a ruptured stomach. The Jinchuriki poked the fox in the stomach with his finger, the red paw lazily rose from the floor and folded okay, after which it collapsed down again, exhausted. Yes, everything is fine. The Jinchuriki repeated with satisfaction and threw his hands behind his head, smiling slightly half the problem with obesity was solved. Act 1 Chapter 4 Minato sat in his office and discussed with the elders, including Danzo and the old Hokage Hiruzen, the emerging conflict with Kumo. So, Danzo, what do you suggest? Minato asked extremely politely, despite the burning desire to break the old man's head right now. The Jinchuriki must be transferred to the root. The old schemer started up his favorite organ again. Danzo, I will disband your organization if you even mention this again. Kushina is not involved in the conflict, period. Minato barked and slammed his fist on the table. Everyone present shuddered the fourth anger was literally in the air. You can't put family above the village. You are Hokage Minato-sama, and you must understand this. The old schemer stubbornly continued to pursue his line. Do you understand that by doing this you will incur not only my wrath, but also an ardent protest from the entire Uzumaki clan? If they collect enough signatures, then we will have every right to dissolve your organization and put you personally on trial. The Hokage rapped gloomily. Danzo frowned. He was threatened and it was unpleasant because the threats were not groundless. Well, and then an angry mother-in-law burst into the office. Minato, why the hell is your son in the hospital while you sit here as an ass? Not at all embarrassed by the four high-ranking visitors, the kunoichi from the threshold began to sneeze her son-in-law. 
Yashimi, we have a meeting, leave the room. Minato barked, narrowing his eyes angrily. He doesn't have enough problems with the elders, but his family constantly tries to piss him off. I'll arrange such a meeting for you. Uzumaki hissed, still ignoring those around her. Minato's face darkened the usually phlegmatic and reasonable Hokage was seething with rage. The small office was instantly filled with heavy, oppressive ki. The ruler's blue eyes narrowed, instantly pinning Yashimi, who had lost all her fighting spirit, to the ground. Get out, the Hokage said quietly. Yashimi pursed her lips, but complied and left the office. As soon as she disappeared behind the door, Minato immediately calmed down, and the elders breathed a sigh of relief although they believed that the fourth Hokage was still too young and hot-tempered. None of those present doubted his strength and ability to use it in time. Even Danzo involuntarily gained respect for his ideological opponent it was worth a lot to force this extravagant woman to obey. The rest of the meeting passed in a more peaceful manner, and after forty minutes all organizational issues were resolved. As soon as the last high-ranking elder disappeared behind the door, an angry Yashimi immediately burst into the office. Minato sighed heavily and prepared to listen to another angry tirade addressed to him now he had no reason to send his mother-in-law home. Minato, what the hell? Nigai beat Naruto, he has a dislocation and a concussion, and you didn't even tell her anything. The embittered woman growled. I won't tell. Until the sloth realizes that by eating your pies he will gain nothing but fat, and comes to his senses, I will not interfere. Why the hell does he? instead of fighting back against Kiba like a normal healthy male, call his grandmother for help. Minato answered with difficulty restraining the anger bubbling inside, as coldly as possible in this situation. He doesn't want to hurt other people, and he's told you this more than once. The loving grandmother was indignant. Doesn't want to hurt? Wonderful. All I needed was a pacifist heir to be happy. At his age, I have already completed three S-rank missions. Not a son, but a complete disappointment. That same Nagai, unlike him, has balls. I hope that at least Kenjin will live up to my expectations, otherwise we can give up on the Namake's clan. The Hokage howled and angrily stared at his no less enraged mother-in-law. Minato, his hands have given up. You yourself pushed him into the academy, so take responsibility for him. Are you his father or what? Minato looked at the floor in embarrassment, and Yashimi, seeing the positive result, hurried to build on the unexpected success. The boy needs support. He needs to be believed in him. If his own father turned his back on him, if he is oppressed even in his family, then what can we talk about? Talk to him. Pay attention to him. After all, he is your son. Yashimi pleaded. The Hokage sighed heavily and covered his face with his palm. Okay, I'll talk to him when he's discharged from the hospital. Are you happy? Namikaze muttered with a martyr's look. Well, at least it's something. Look, if you deceive me, I'll shake your soul out. Yashimi turned around and walked out of the office with a firm gait, besieging the Hokage himself. Distressed, Minato began to do what he always did sort through the shinobi's mission reports. His son, meanwhile, brazenly snorted into two holes, like his fellow sufferer. Kurama woke up from the fact that he desperately wanted to go to the toilet. The fox rolled over onto his swollen belly, rose to his paws and looked out the window. It faced a busy street, so it was impossible to use the bushes for their intended purpose. Reluctantly, Kubi ran to the thinker's abode. Having with difficulty perched himself on the toilet and almost hitting it with his paw twice, Trying his best not to get his fluffy tails dirty, the nine tails stared at the ceiling and did his dirty deed. When the demon came out of the toilet, he was greeted with a surprised look by Naruto, who had woken up from the sound of falling water. Wow, what a smart fox, he goes to the potty on his own. Naruto almost melted into a pink puddle with emotion. And this fox also wrote the Jonin exam for you and commanded a squad of ANBU for you for a year and a half. Show at least a drop of respect. The demon appealed to the conscience of its host. The Jinchuriki hesitated and looked at the floor in embarrassment. Thank you for everything, Kurama. 
he said quietly. The fox smiled and jumped onto the bed next to him. You're welcome, because we have one life between us. Your problems are my problems. Your enemies are my enemies. The demon changed its form to an animal one and laid down next to its carrier. It seems to me, or have you grown up? Naruto looked at the fox closely, noting that in the lying position he had become fifteen centimeters longer. It doesn't seem like this snack was good for me. The kitsune noted with satisfaction the reserve of chakra, which was completely restored after yesterday's treatment of himself and his carrier, and even slightly increased. Me too, because you saved me from obesity. The Jinchuriki and his demon looked at each other and laughed quietly. This world wasn't so bad, for now they were both alive, well fed and with a roof over their heads. What we are going to do? Asked the demon, whose mood rapidly crawled up. Nothing. Thanks to you, my bruises and my leg are gone. We're being discharged today. Uzumaki reported cheerfully. Amazing. Shall we go then? My nose already hurts from the smell of phenol. The demon complained. Let's go. Naruto got dressed and took the basket. Kurama saluted and disappeared in a puff of white smoke. The Jinshuriki threw a towel into the basket and was just about to leave when the doctor came, this time catching the door and pushing it against the wall. Mamoru-san, I'm feeling better. I wanted to go home. Uzumaki immediately went on the offensive not wanting to give him a single chance to keep him here for at least another day. Exactly? Come on, jump on one leg. The Jinchuriki did what they asked without any problems. Kurama's chakra was better than any medicine. The bruises, as I see, have already disappeared. Yes, Uzumaki's regeneration is truly legendary. Hmm. Well, then you can go. The doctor answered, hesitantly scratching the back of his head. Arigato, Mamoru-san. Bowing, the fat man went home. Walking out into the street, Naruto immediately began to catch the mocking glances of passers-by. Look, it's Puklakad's Naruto. The Jinchuriki saw Kiba with a couple of friends quickly approaching him. Let's use what Jiraiya-sensei taught me if you can't win, run. The Jinchuriki ran away, the guys rushed after him. The new body was distinguished by disgusting endurance. So after a few minutes the Jinchuriki felt tired and short of breath, and his pursuers were getting closer. The captain caught his eye on a bag of cement conveniently lying on the roof, reflexively made seals and was transported to its place. Kiba and the team turned their heads from side to side in shock, not even thinking to look up. Some kind of damn thing. Shrugging their shoulders, the guys walked away. Brilliant. You know, when it comes to improvisation— you have no equal. The fox praised his jinchuriki, feeling his pride and gratitude. Thank you, I'm trying. Answered the jinchuriki, slightly embarrassed, who, despite all his positive qualities, had suffered from attention deficit disorder since childhood, which QB tried in every possible way to eradicate, but so far it had turned out very poorly. Naruto, pleased with himself, went home. The Hokage's mansion was not small, three stories high, with a well-kept garden and a forged cast-iron fence around a vast surrounding area. The Jinchuriki walked inside and went to explore his home. On the ground floor there was a noble kitchen, no less than thirty square meters. The living room absolutely amazed the imagination with its size. A fully functional fireplace, imbued with fire chakra from a small metal plate with a seal at the bottom in front of which there were two chairs, created a homely atmosphere of comfort in the room. Behind the carved oak door there was a sauna. This is what I understand the Hokage's house. There's even a sauna. Uzumaki commented with poorly concealed admiration in his voice. Pfft, you should see my house. The fox snorted skeptically all this pomp did not make the slightest impression on him. Do you have it? Naruto asked. At least there was. In that world, in the dimension of foxes, I was a king and a god, I had my own palace. Kurama closed his eyes dreamily, and sighed heavily in this world the foxes had their own king, and he definitely won't take his place in the next hundred years luminary unless the Kanoha shinobi do him a favor and crawl into his mouth with their hands raised. You never told me about this. Naruto, who never hid anything from his best friend, was indignant. You never asked me. The fox retorted. 
Please tell me. There was serious curiosity in the Jinchuriki's voice. Okay, but not now. After exchanging a couple more phrases, the offworlders went upstairs. On the second floor there are ten bedrooms, including children's rooms. The house was designed to receive many guests. On the third floor, Naruto realized, were the personal offices of Kushina, Minato, and Momoka. The rooms were locked, the doorposts were dotted with hieroglyphs emitting an eerie light. It looks like a barrier. But this is a detector. And this is an identification card. And this is a bomb. Demonstrating his superficial knowledge of the art of seals, Uzumaki stared in amazement at the fattening hieroglyph, the kind that should have demolished the floor of the house when activated. Why the hell would you keep a cocked bomb in your own house? The fox was perplexed. I think there are secret documents there, he's the Hokage. Kurama snorted skeptically and scratched his paw behind his ear he couldn't believe that some pieces of paper could be more valuable to a person than his own female and cubs. Naruto! The Jinchuriki turned around sharply and stood in a fighting stance, but seeing that it was just Nagai, he lowered his hands, continuing to glance at her warily from under his brows. What do you want? The guy asked gloomily. I wanted to apologize. I didn't want to hit you, honestly, it's just that insults drive me crazy, you know. The girl threw up her hands guiltily, although it was clear from her eyes and nervously trembling lips that she only came to apologize because her mother together with my grandmother, they so clearly explained to her the inadmissibility of such actions towards their relatives that the girl's seat will remind of itself for at least another week every time she tries to land somewhere. So be it, apology accepted, anything else? asked the Jinchuriki. Not yet. With a feeling of fulfilled duty, the sister went to her room to think over a plan for revenge on all her dearly beloved relatives. Shrugging his shoulders, Naruto went downstairs and easily found his room, because on the white door there was scrawled, Fat. Fat ass. Fat ass. And a bunch of other derivatives of the word fat. After some thought, the Jinchuriki came to the conclusion that this was the work of his younger brother. Even the infinitely naive Naruto did not believe that Nagai, and even more so Momoka, were capable of such low and flat humor. Smiling slightly and shaking his head reproachfully, Naruto entered his room and froze on the threshold. H -h 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 -h. Hysterical laughter rang out in his head. Act 1 Chapter 5 E. -e, -e. Naruto pointed his finger at the white wallpaper with pink camellias. You you you. The Jinchuriki ran up to the wooden horse, the size of a good pony, and waved his arms around it. Why, why, why? Uzumaki waved his hands at the stuffed panda in the corner. Yes, this is damn nonsense. Naruto sat down on the fluffy beige rug in the center of the room and grabbed his head. Are you sure you didn't mix up the room? The fox asked, continuing to chuckle nervously. Do you think Nagai will be called Fat Base? Although, what the hell is it, we need to check. Full of sincere hope, the fat man went to his sister's room. Having knocked, he opened the door and was literally scalded by an indignant look. Did I allow you to come in, chubby? The girl was sitting on the bed and painting her toenails red. The Jinchuriki looked around her room and almost strangled himself with indignation the girl had a wide variety of cold and not-so-cold weapons hung on the walls. In the corner there was a training wooden dummy for practicing strikes, otherwise the situation was extremely ascetic, like a real soldier at home. Forgive me for the intrusion, Nagai. Uzumaki tried to correct the situation. Okay, why bother? The golden-haired fury asked more peacefully. Hmm. The Jinchuriki's gaze caught on the scales in the corner. Oh, that's right, I wanted to weigh myself. The fat man beamed. No, these are my scales, you will crush them. The academy student snapped, but seeing the embarrassment on her brother's face, she burst out laughing. Okay, you little pig, weigh yourself. Thank you. The Jinchuriki walked up to the device, took off the fluffy slippers that he had put on at the entrance to the house, and stood on the scales. The guy's jaw dropped, the fox whined hungrily again, imagining how well this carcass would nestle in his stomach. 103 and 5. Yours, don't swear. The indignant Nagai threw her sandal at the back of her brother's head, but he didn't even twitch. 
sister, don't you remember how tall I am? The Jinchuriki asked, getting cold. Are your brains overgrown with fat? You took measurements at the academy a week ago. Sixty-five meters. Suspicion began to creep into the girl's heart. Why does her brother talk so much? Why doesn't he know even basic things about himself? Could this be an enemy shinobi in disguise? But then her whole family, especially her father, is in mortal danger. You need to wait a little and follow him. But you shouldn't wave your saber in such a matter. The Jinchuriki hovered for a couple of moments at sixteen. He barely reached sixty meters and weighed a measly half a centner. That's why Kiba and his brother seemed so small to him here the descendants of Kushina and Minato were as tall as their father, and Naruto generally stood out against their background, surpassing his sister, who was not small for her age, by a head. Yes, now I can argue with Chojin. Authority. Be careful not to burst from your... Authority. The fox laughed quietly and continued to watch with interest what was happening through the eyes of his host. I'll try. Naruto chuckled and clenched his fist this promise to be interesting. Well, why are you up? Have you weighed yourself? Get out, you rump. The future Kunoichi, whose living space was unceremoniously occupied by the well-known, but so strange chubby man, was on nerves. Nigai, can I borrow your mannequin? The Jinchuriki politely asked, letting the insult fall on deaf ears. Do you miss your horse any more, little one? The girl was sincerely surprised by the Jinchuriki's request why would he be interested in military equipment. There's only a little time left before the exam. I wouldn't want to fail and disgrace my father. Naruto muttered, throwing his hands behind his head. Just three days ago you buzzed everyone's ears that you were going to open a cafe and become a chef after graduating from the academy? Nagaya was slowly developing a culture shock. I changed my mind. Now I want to become a shinobi. The Jinchuriki barked and pointed at the girl who had frozen with nail polish in her hand and had her toes spread out. You are not my brother. The future Kunoichi jumped to her feet and armed herself with a kunai snatched from under the pillow. What did you do with him, Karian? Nigai was seriously alarmed Naruto dreamed of becoming a cook all his life and never changed. But here it was so suddenly, one day. If something happened to her brother, then this bastard will be in trouble. Still, Nigai loved him. Well, it was impossible not to love this meek and caring lout, even though at times he drove her to white heat with his helplessness. Nigai, it's me, do you hear? It's me, your brother, calm down. The Jinchuriki put his palms out in front of him and slowly backed away towards the door, thinking through a plan of retreat. What is the name of our sensei? The girl asked tossing and grabbing the kanai more comfortably. Irika Yumino. Naruto answered automatically. Nigai nodded silently, while simultaneously thinking of her next question. What is your godfather's name? Asked the future Kunoichi, slowly walking around the tense fat man. Jiraiya, answered the Jinchuriki. What's my boyfriend's name? And here Naruto got into trouble. Who could it be? Who? The Jinchuriki looked around frantically. Nigai took this as a gesture of denial and lowered her weapon. That's right, I don't have a boyfriend. The girl smiled and hung the kanai on the nail the little brother passed the test. Naruto sighed with relief and wiped the sweat on his forehead he was not ready for exposure. They would probably hand him over to the mentalists, and they would pull out Karama and experiment on him. Thank you for not forgetting. The fox grumbled gnawing the claws on both front paws out of excitement during the conversation. Well, that's a laudable wish, chubby. Dad is already going crazy because of you, and your room is driving him into depression. Nigai snorted mockingly, remembering her father's lamentations while pasting new wallpaper with pink flowers in the room of the heir to the Namake's clan. So it's time to remake it. The Jinchuriki barked, confidently cracking his fist into his palm. No, I definitely hit you too hard, although the changes clearly benefited you. Would you like to repeat it? The girl grinned ominously and crunched her fingers. I don't fight with girls, much less my sisters, said the Jinchuriki, as if he were snapping. No, it seems not strong enough. Rump, you understand, in addition to Shinobi, there are also Kunoichi. Are you really going to let the first bitch you meet beat you up? 
We'll figure it out on the spot. Uzumaki excused himself. Okay, take the dummy. It's no use to me anyway. It breaks. It's an infection. Nigai thoughtfully examined her fist and imbued it with chakra. No, well, if you're going to hammer with chakra, then even a cast iron cauldron won't suit you. Grandma Tsunade is smashing mountains with her fists. The Jinchuriki muttered, pulling the mannequin out of his sister's room. Hey, I keep bringing surprises, Donut. Yes, I use chakra, but I need to train in this very thing God did not reward me with strength. Nagai only batted her eyes in surprise when she heard her brother's speech, clearly based on a rather deep knowledge of military affairs. Well, as you wish. Naruto slammed the door and, satisfied with the acquisition, locked himself in his pink abode. It's a nightmare. This place makes me depressed too. The Jinchuriki muttered irritably. I can only sympathize, but I won't repaste your wallpaper. Don't even ask. The demon immediately dotted all the I.S. Naruto smiled broadly, preparing to begin training in a desperate attempt to regain his former power. But then he was struck by the thought that Kurama was also training, in his own way, eating such inadequate amounts of organic matter that the Jinchuriki was amazed at how his stomach didn't burst. Kurama felt that Naruto was thinking about him, and prepared to answer the yet unasked question, making himself comfortable. Still, you really accumulated all your strength on your own, and didn't receive it from birth? asked the Jinchuriki. Um, well, yes, it turns out that's the case. Shinju's power was indeed just starting. Capital. Multiplied by the fox many times over in battles with thousands of strong shinobi, ending with the latter being eaten. It's worthy of respect, however, I don't like your methods. Well, it's time for me to start self-development. The Jinchuriki set the dummy in place and, having warmed up, began to deliver very noticeable blows to the rough wood, dodging wooden blocks, using skills from of your past life. After an hour of torment, the guy's hands were covered with bruises, but Naruto himself was indecently pleased although his body was not used to more or less serious loads. The brains of the Jinchuriki belonged to the ANBU captain, so he knew the fighting skills. They just needed repracticing. Fat is good, but meat is even better, the Jinchuriki said meaningfully, hooked his feet on the bed and began to train his abs. I support. Kurama was glad to see that his Jinchuriki, as always, did not give up and was persistently trying to catch up. The only pity is that it will be much more difficult for him to do this himself he will need tens of tons of organic matter, or hundreds of jounins. This was followed by push-ups, squats and a whole pack of various physical training exercises. At the end of the workout, the plump one could twist his t-shirt. It seemed like he had already lost a ton of weight. Few like the good old days. And now we need to do the interior. The Jinchuriki took the horse and already opened the window, but then he looked into the drawn eyes full of puppy devotion and sighed heavily the toy could serve someone else, for example, him younger brother. At that moment, my father knocked on the door. The Jinchuriki put the horse in place and let the Hokage in. Hi, Dad. Surprised by his father's visit, Naruto quickly came to his senses and greeted his precious guest. He had dreamed of saying these words for so long, but it turned out to be extremely casual. Hello? Minato answered with slight apathy in his voice and lazily looked around the plump man's room, noticing with surprise Nagai's mannequin. Son, are you tired of living? Why did you take your sister's mannequin? This is not a toy. You better play around with your pony. The Yandame spat through his teeth glaring at the innocent horse. The Jinchuriki shuddered and looked away the contempt in the eyes of his own father was more painful than the most sophisticated torture of Ibiki. She gave it to me herself. I'm training. The boy blurted out. I have to make sure of this. The head of the family took the mannequin by the armpit and his son by the ear and went to the youngest daughter's room. Father doesn't favor you. The demon commented sympathetically. If I were him... I wouldn't complain either I'm a local and a complete disappointment. Naruto answered with bitterness in his voice. The fox chose not to develop such a painful topic for the Jinchuriki and covered his muzzle with his tails, pressing his ears to the top of his head. Daughter, did you really give your brother the mannequin? Minato asked the girl who was diligently studying history, lounging on the bed and crossing her legs. 
Hello to you too, Dad. Thank you for keeping up appearances and knocking before entering. Minato hesitated and awkwardly shifted from foot to foot he respected his daughter and allowed her to set her own rules in his room. Nigai noticed the Hokage's silent apology and nodded in satisfaction, continuing the conversation. Yes, he decided to come to his senses. Not even a thousand years have passed. The Kunoichi muttered listlessly. It's hard to believe. Minato measured his son with a lazy look and returned the mannequin to him. If the conflict between you is over, I will prefer to leave. Minato walked out the door, leaving Naruto and the guy to play a staring contest. Is he always this kind? The fat man asked with slight resentment in his voice, rubbing his red in the ear. Naturally, with such an air, it's no wonder he'd hang himself. The future Kunoichi answered with a slight mockery in her voice. Okay, we'll fix it. The Jinchuriki muttered and walked out the door. Be careful not to crush the correction, rump. The girl shouted after her and giggled disgustingly. He angrily snoring Uzumaki threw the mannequin into the corner and again thought about how to get rid of excess trash. Naruto, you have a younger brother, if you haven't forgotten, said the demon, who had been silent until now. Exactly. Thanks, buddy. Naruto, taking the panda under his arm and the pony in his hand, knocked on his younger brother's door. A few seconds later, a disheveled, sleepy face peeked out, and Naruto couldn't help but smile slightly. What do you want, fat guy? The smile disappeared from the Jinchuriki's face. Even his younger brother didn't care about him. Can Jen, do you need new toys? The Jinchuriki asked without enthusiasm in his voice. Are you, are you giving them to me? The boy stared in fascination at the burden in his brother's hands. Yeah, take it. Naruto muttered. The kid immediately grabbed the panda and the horse and dragged them to him, after which he returned to his brother, beaming with happiness. Thank you, Anai san, I've always dreamed about this. The boy exclaimed, smiling widely with joy. You're welcome, brother. If you need anything else, contact me. Consumed by thoughts of a difficult relationship with his father, the Jinchuriki took a shower and then went to bed, completely forgetting that tomorrow he would have his first trip to the academy in the last six years. Act 1 Chapter 6. Naruto jumped up on the bed as if stung and armed himself with a pillow the noise was as if a mad gorilla was banging on the door. Naruto oh, get up, you'll be late for the academy. Kushina kicked the flimsy wooden barrier a few more times and walked towards Nagai. The daughter had already had enough of her mother's sound therapy, so the door swung open exactly at the moment when the kunoichi wanted to bring down her steel fist on her. The daughter flew back a few steps, the mother screamed and rushed to her. Mom, I'm not deaf, and neither is Naruto. There's no point in yelling at the whole of Kanoha and breaking down doors every morning. Hissing angrily, Nagai pushed her away. Daughter, forgive me. Kushina began to anxiously examine her daughter's head, but thick golden hair softened the blow, and the incident did not have serious consequences in the form of bruises. Nonsense, the main thing is that it's not in the face. Okay, I have to go. The girl got to her feet and trudged into the shower, rubbing the bruised top of her head. The red-haired girl sadly shook her head and vowed to herself to be more restrained in the future. Kanjen prudently locked himself in the toilet leaving the overly caring mother with nothing. Kushina shrugged when she saw the door to his room wide open and went to prepare breakfast. Naruto, leave the pillow alone and pack your backpack you have to go to the academy again. The fox reminded his Jinchuriki, knowing that if he was given free reign, he, like the Nine Tails himself, would sleep through everything in the world. Don't remind me, all these lectures, tests, tests and tons, kilotons, megatons of mathematics. Hate and hate, the Jinchuriki howled. Okay, let's escape from the village, you will rob and kill, and I will eat. The tiny kitsun licked his lips carnivorously. Okay, okay, I'm on my way. Letting out a heavy sigh, the Jinchuriki looked skeptically at the pile of waste paper on the table and grabbed it into a briefcase the color of an exploded fruit and vegetable base. Nigai came out of the shower, the Jinchuriki sideways pushed past her and occupied the bathroom. Nisan, Nisan, breakfast is ready, hurry up. The boy squealed behind the door. Naruto, 
bitterly turning over his loose bodies, got dressed, flew out of the shower and headed to the dining room. Kanjen and Nagai were already finishing. Minato was reading the newspaper, occasionally drinking coffee. Gods, is this really family? How much Naruto was willing to give for such a breakfast, instead of tired of custard ramen and splendid isolation. How he missed the comfort of home all his life. For as long as he could remember, Naruto was always alone. Only the last year was brightened up by his friendship with Kurama. Now Uzumaki had a chance to experience all aspects of family life, which he intended to take full advantage of. Smiling contentedly, the fat man sat down at the table. Mom immediately put a plate of omelet and a glass of orange juice in front of Naruto, having prepared a refill in advance for the most gluttonous member of the family. The jinchuriki sniffed and pounced on the food, but choked when he saw his father's icy gaze. Naruto, why didn't you help me today? Kushina asked, discouraging Minato from any interest in his angry tirade. Um, um, um I sat in the shower for a long time. It won't happen again. I promise. The red-haired woman raised her eyebrow skeptically, but did not begin to unravel the matter. Naruto sighed with relief the conspiracy was maintained. Having happily chewed the omelet, hugged and kissed his mother tightly, the jinchuriki started to climb towards his father, but received a slap on the head and, blazing with indignation, went to get his backpack. Karama, I'll crawl into your belly myself if this snob doesn't recognize me in a month. The jinchuriki promised with quiet anger in his voice. I didn't pull your tongue. Karama answered phlegmatically, picking at the concrete floor with his finger. He would rather bite off his own paw than harm Naruto. Taking his unpleasant burden, Uzumaki went to the academy in splendid isolation Nigai and Kanjen had long left the house. Naruto was again amazed at the similarities and at the same time the many differences between the Kanoha of this world and his home world. Ichiraka was there, which was pleasing, but the number of red-haired and black-haired representatives of the great clans was simply off the charts. And each of them is pulling the blanket over themselves, how has the civil war not broken out yet? The former ANBU was curious. I don't know and I don't want to know. I want them all to just die. Any mention of Uzumaki or Uchiha immediately infuriated the demon. Naruto ignored the fox's answer and sped up time was running out and the path to the academy was not close. Fortunately for Uzumaki, he arrived on time, which surprised his classmates a lot. Kiba, who wanted to publicly discredit the son of the Hokage, was besieged by such an ill-timed call. Irika sensei infinitely familiar and dear to Naruto's heart, entered the class in his eternal chunin vest. A smiling guy gave sound therapy to the noisy students, after which all their ardor faded away, like a fire described by a detachment of pioneers. Well, my bandalogs, your training within the walls of the academy is coming to an end. Iroka began too cheerfully, which made even the most foolish understand that he was glad to finally get rid of a bunch of unteachable blockheads. Well, finally, Kiba said listlessly, leaning back in his chair and looking at the ceiling with boredom. Be silent. The chunin threw the chalk right at the insolent student's nose, he jerked and almost threw the limp Akamaru off his head. The puppy yelped offendedly and grabbed the pliable skin with its claws. Inazuka hissed, but waited until the dog calmed down. So, you are at the finish line three months left. Anyone with ponytails urgently needs to tighten them up. This especially applies to you, Naruto. The sensei pointed his finger at the fat man who was unsuccessfully trying to appear inconspicuous. The class laughed in unison the Hokage's son had more tails than the QB no Yoko. Having finished his parting words, Iruka began the lesson. Naruto listened to him with half an ear, studying the composition of his class in surprise. Besides Sasuke, there were two other little Uchihas here. There were two representatives of Hyuga, unlike in the previous world Hinata, who was painfully familiar to Naruto, and another white-eyed one. In addition to the Hokage family, another Uzumaki was present here. I wonder what kind of military potential this Kanoha has? He turned again to the all-knowing demon Junchuriki. They would easily take over our entire world if they had the opportunity. The fox answered gloomily. Wow. Naruto just shook his head in shock. 
The lecture dragged on for a painfully long time, but conversations about nothing with the nine tails brightened up the hour and a half wait. Next on the plan was a practical lesson outdoors. After half an hour of warming up, Irika decided to spar. The first was Nagai. Her opponent was Sasuke. The Uchiha grimaced contemptuously he considered fighting with a girl beneath his dignity. The Kunoichi quickly beat the crap out of him. However, surprising no one Nagai was the best student in the entire stream. The brunette took a fighting stance and beckoned the girl with his hand. Nigai made a lightning-fast lunge forward, pumping a burst of chakra into her fist. A powerful blow was aimed at the Uchiha's jaw, but he dodged, grabbed the Hokage's daughter's hand by the wrist, rested his other hand on her armpit, and threw the girl over himself. The Kunoichi somersaulted in the air, but landed on her feet. Sasuke rushed to the attack and tried to kick the girl on the move, but she grabbed his leg under the armpit and punched him in the face three times after which the brunette fell to the ground in shame. Namike's Nagai defeated. Irika chanted. The girl bowed pathetically to the friendly howls of the female, and enthusiastic cries of the male half of the team. Angrily shaking his head from side to side, the Uchiha returned to his place in shame. Naruto was amazed at his sister's skill. Nigai, it was incomparable. I'm proud to have such a sister. The Jinchuriki exclaimed in admiration he was truly surprised, because in his world only Jonins and the best Chunins fought so skillfully. The girl chuckled Naruto had never praised her before. It's a pity I can't say the same about you. The girl snorted mockingly. You'll see, I'll surprise you. Uzumaki drawled mysteriously. We'll see, his sister answered skeptically. Namike's Naruto vs. Inazuka Kiba Irika recited. Well, surprise. Nigai gave her brother an incendiary slap on the back of the head, and he walked forward with a hiss, to the friendly laughter of his classmates. No one expected anything supernatural from the Hokage's son. Ha! Huh. Puffy, come here, I'll make a chop out of you. The dog owner stood in a fighting stance and beckoned his opponent with his hand. The children did not even doubt his victory the main bully of Kanoha keeping all his peers at bay against a harmless, quiet pacifist. The latter didn't have a chance. Use your mass. It gives you a great advantage. The demon advised. Yes, sir. Namikaze estimated that it weighs twice as much, so there could be no talk of any superiority in speed. We need to go ahead. To keep a surprise, Naruto, who usually always squealed like a slaughtered pig at the sight of danger, moved towards him covering his head with his hands. The Inazuka growled and began to hit the Jinchuriki's unprotected torso. Do you think this is a blow? Without waiting for an answer, Naruto threw his elbow into the forehead of the enraged Inazuka. The guy collapsed on his ass and blinked his eyes in defeat, clutching his buzzing head. What a blow! The Jinchuriki exclaimed fervently. The Kitsune supported him, sending him an emotion of pride and approval. 5-4 Irika began counting down. The enraged dog walker immediately jumped to his feet. You angered me, fat trust, you're screwed. Kiba put chakra in his hands and delivered several very noticeable blows to the Jinchuriki's ribs. He only grunted and grabbed him in his arms, slamming the boy's whole body onto the cold ground. I She the dog the Nezuka hug. Irika sensei, should I continue? Uzumaki asked the shock sensei. No, you won, stop. Kiba barked, struggling to his feet. We're not done yet. The Inazuka rushed to attack for the third time. Naruto decided not to use his old skills, so as not to arouse suspicion, so he simply rushed towards his opponent. Kiba clearly did not expect such pressure so he was knocked down by a huge bulk, turned onto his stomach with a powerful kick and caught in a painful hold. Naruto pressed his back with his knee and pulled his hand towards himself. Ah, hey, It hurts. Let go. The beaten dog owner howled. Irika sensei is it all over now? Naruto asked with boredom in his voice. It's been a long time. You win. Let him go. 
The Chunin answered with slight nervousness in his voice he had no need for injuries to students during training. Yes, sir. The fat man got off his defeated opponent and looked around the class. The guys were silent, their mouths open in surprise the worst student of the academy butchered the main bully like God cut up a turtle. This is not the end yet, hissed an enraged Kiba. Suffer in silence, non-entity. Naruto repaid the offender with the same coin. The Inazuka screamed and again rushed at the offender with his fists. But the Jinchuriki pushed him in the forehead with all his weight, and the violent one flew away to Irika, who put his hand on his shoulder and squeezed so hard that the bully almost sobbed in pain. Calm down, Kiba. You lost. Accept it with dignity and go train so that this doesn't happen again. The Inazuka pushed the teacher aside and stomped over to Akameru, sat him on his head and began to animatedly discuss with his friends a plan for revenge on the savage hog. Radiating waves of pathos with his entire appearance, the son of the Hokage walked into the crowd of his friends. Kurama, this is absolutely amazing. I feel like a monster. Naruto, always smaller and lighter than his opponents, recalled his new combat experience. If you bite, not a monster, the same Nagai will break all your ribs. And this is just a young idiot who doesn't even know how to properly pump chakra into his hands. The Nine Tails grumbled gloomily. Don't spoil my triumph. The Jinchuriki replied. An ANBU captain and hero of WW4 beat up a child. Yes, this is a real triumph, eclipsing the murder of Madara and Ama no Hoku. The fox answered with a mocking voice. Naruto was embarrassed, unable to find any arguments, which was how almost every argument he had with the Nine Tails ended, but he didn't have to blush for Long Nagai, who had quietly approached, clapped her hand on her brother's shoulder, he almost dropped half a pound in his pants and shuddered with his whole body in surprise. Naruto, today for the first time I can say that I am proud of my brother. The sister shook her brother's hand and stepped aside. You see, she's not that nasty. The demon noted. But still, I won't anger her in vain the blows could be worse than Sakura's. Speaking of Sakura, the Jinchuriki looked around in search of the pink-haired monster and found him in the same place as always in the vicinity of Uchiha Sasuke the Kunoichi tried to calm the cursing Nigai, the heir of the great clan. Some things don't change in all the worlds. The fox drawled meaningfully. The rest of the fights were not so interesting the children did not want to harm their friends and fought half-heartedly. Many opponents, having been hit in the jug a couple of times, simply gave up. The battered students made their way home in a line. The path to the Jinchuriki's home was full of surprises. Act 1 Chapter 7. Naruto wanted to take a walk around Kanoha to finally figure out how everything works here. Unfortunately, children were not allowed to leave the academy without adult accompaniment so at least someone had to stay behind to pick up their younger brother. Nagai, will you take Kenjin home? The Jinchuriki asked without any hope of success. Where are you going, chubby? Nagai asked in surprise. The girl is used to the fact that her brother always goes home first after finishing classes for dinner. Well, I want to do therapeutic walking in the fresh air to accustom my heart to stress. Then I wanted to run for an hour or two. Naruto dumbfounded his sister. Oh, good idea. I couldn't even imagine this. Well, if that's the case, then get out. The girl was seriously surprised by her brother's behavior, but she didn't object, so she simply followed the scarlet-haired back cutter. If Naruto has come to his senses, then it would be a sin to in any way hinder him in his new endeavors. The Jinchuriki put his hands behind his head and slowly walked along the main street actively looking around. As an ANBU captain, he couldn't help but notice the three teenagers following him out of sight. Through some simple thought, Naruto realized that it could only be Kiba. It looks like they are waiting for you to go into a dark alley. The fox suggested. Well, I won't disappoint them, just. The Jinchuriki froze in front of the cellar of ice cream and cold drinks, hiding from the scorching heat under a spreading umbrella. His gaze was drawn to the treasured green jar of Naruto's favorite energy drink, which often replaced his sleep in a past life. No, 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 don't even think about it. I won't treat your gastritis anymore. The demon protested. Come on, one jar has never made anyone sick. 
Naruto patted his pockets and found a handful of change. How much? asked the Hokage's son. Five ri. The seller lazily drawled, not even deigning to look up from reading the fascinating newspaper. Here, Uzumaki handed the guy five shiny round pieces and took the treasure jar covered with frost. The Jinchuriki noticed a suspicious alley a hundred meters away and headed towards it. Opening the jar and shuddering at the wonderful hissing sound, Naruto began to pour the toxic-looking acid-green liquid into himself. How can you drink this rubbish? You are voluntarily poisoning yourself. The fox was indignant. I count on your healing abilities, the Uzumaki replied, grinning defiantly. The demon sighed heavily, and then waved his paw at the irresponsible Jinchuriki. Still can't convince him. Naruto walked into the alley and placed the half-empty jar on the floor. The Jinchuriki cracked his fingers and prepared for a fight. Kiba and company did not have to wait long. Well, fat trust, I didn't say that this is not the end yet. Kiba grinned bloodthirstily. You're so weak and pathetic that you took a couple more brats with you, and like real faggots, you're going to beat me like AC? Naruto answered without a shadow of fear you need to speak to the cattle in their own language. Kiba began to gasp for air the victim was not the least bit afraid, and evenly gave a damn when the three of them attacked him. Not only was he not afraid, but he insulted them. What was doubly offensive was that Naruto was really stronger than him, and even if the three of them beat him, the fact would remain a fact. Why are you getting loose, Donut? Do you have a lot of extra teeth, or do you think that your dad will save you from anything? Naruto winced in disgust in that world, he more than once encountered gangs of such scumbags in his childhood, the burning hatred for which has not faded to this day. Shut up and let's get down to business. The Jinchuriki took a fighting stance and beckoned his opponent with his hand. The angry guys immediately moved towards him. I can't get out here on mass alone. I'll use what I was taught in ANBU. Uzumaki thought. It is high time. Nine Tails supported his idea. The first attacker was a tall wimp who tried to grab the fat man by the left arm. Naruto squatted down slightly, rested his shoulder on his opponent's pelvis and straightened up sharply. The opponent flew over the fat man and fell on his back from a height of three meters. Kiba, as the strongest among the attackers, decided that he needed to be the center of attention. Inazuka tried to hit the fat guy in the head with a turntable, but he made a block with both hands and only swayed, while the dog walker howled from a sharp pain in his knee. The defeated wimp rose to his feet and attacked the fat man from behind, grabbing his arms. The third attacker stood in front of the Jinchuriki and began to hit him in the solar plexus. Come on, you disappoint me. You can't butcher some suckers. The demon was indignant, trembling slightly with excitement he was ready to tear these bastards into pieces right now, but then you can forget about disguise. Naruto growled angrily and abruptly crouched down, leaning forward, throwing the wimp over him and bringing him down on the head of the second attacker. Hissing in pain, Kiba rose to his feet and limping on the limb with which he had the imprudence to hit the fat man, rushed into hand-to-hand combat. Naruto, why don't you hit them? Asked the demon, flinching from every blow the Jinchuriki missed. Throws are more effective. Naruto replied. Something is invisible. The demon muttered skeptically, assessing the damage inflicted on his friend. I don't want to hurt them, they'll take my head off for this. Uzumaki voiced the real reason. Aha, then it's clear. The demon drawled. But this bestiality won't leave me alone until I break something for him. The Jinchuriki snorted angrily. Naruto sidestepped several of Kiba's blows and slammed his foot into Kiba's stomach with all his might, putting his entire body weight into the blow. The boy squeaked and flew two meters through the air, knocking down his accomplices who had just risen. Naruto walked up to the pile of bodies writhing in pain and looked at them with a contemptuous look. Listen to me carefully, fool. One more time someone squeaks something about me, I'll knock out all your teeth and make you eat them. Am I making myself clear? Naruto said as menacingly as he could, but despite all his efforts, from the outside it looked very comical. Hi. The beaten guys hastily exhaled. 
Well, that's okay. Naruto picked up the open jar from the ground and walked away from the gateway. Even the ANBU captain was unable to notice the dark figure lurking under the visual barrier on the roof of the house, which followed the hero of the occasion. Karama, do you think I acted too harshly? The Jinchuriki asked worriedly. If I were free, I would kill them for this. No, you did everything right. Now they definitely won't come to you. The demon answered with a stern frown. Well, at least this makes me happy, although it's still an unpleasant feeling the ANBU captain has now beaten three children. The mental tossing of the Jinchuriki was interrupted in the most unexpected way someone's hand lay on his shoulder. Naruto turned around and emptied his mouth filled with fizzy bread directly into his black-haired face. The guy's eye twitched, the angry shinobi could not stand it and took the ken from the fat man, after which he crushed it on the blonde top of his head, dousing the Hokage's son with his own drink. Ayatachi? The Jinchuriki muttered, ignoring the fizzy drink flowing down his face. The brunette's impenetrable face, covered with sweet liquid, was distorted by surprise for a second, but then the Uchiha put on his stone mask again. How do you know my name? We've never met before. The Uchiha asked. Damn, I was caught like a fool. The Jinchuriki exclaimed, angry with himself. Improvise. Advised the fox, not knowing what to do, but trusting Naruto's intuition more than himself. My father told me that you are the genius of your clan, and set you up as an example to me. Naruto blurted out the first thing that came to his mind. You flatter me. The Uchiha's face was distorted by a contemptuous grin. He didn't like sycophants. This inspired me, so I decided to become a shinobi so that they would respect me the same way. He continued to come up with his legend as a jinchuriki. You used ambu techniques, how do you know them? Itachi asked the question that interested him most. Naruto was silent for a couple of moments, unable to come up with a plausible answer, but, as always, the fox came to his aid. Say that your sister taught you, and her father taught her. Remove suspicion from yourself, and they will get out of it themselves even if later they interrogate you themselves you will have time to come up with a better cover. Nine Tails voiced his insidious plan. My sister taught me, and my father worked with her. The Jinchuriki answered proudly, puffing out his chest, using the help of a furry prompter. Hmm. Itachi had never followed the Hokage's son before. He only knew that he was not at all interested in the art of shinobi which made the chubby man often become an object of ridicule, but this did not mean that Naruto would not be taught in the family. Minato is one of the strongest shinobi in the world, so the story rings true. Okay, go, but remember I'm watching you. Itachi jumped onto the roof and disappeared into the concrete jungle, heading for water to wash off the fizzy kindly provided by Naruto. No, did you see that? Itachi, Alive, real, not resurrected or zombified, exclaimed the Jinchuriki, and you spat half a can of energy drink in his face. Not very respectful, the Bijou reminded grumpily. You're right, it turned out ugly, but it was quite a shock for me. The boy tried to justify himself. What's strange about that? This is a different universe, here Toby may not be a Bido, but Kakashi, for example. The demon recalled. Naruto just shook his head the evil Kakashi did not suit him at all. I wonder how we got here, and if there are other parallel worlds? The Jinchuriki muttered thoughtfully. Who knows? The fox shrugged and curled up, his tails spread out imposingly and with a funny ruffle. Naruto, seeing this picture through a mental connection, jumped into his fist and noted that his hand was glued to his face. What a red-eyed bastard. I didn't douse him on purpose but now I have to explain myself to my mother. The fat man was indignant. You were going to training, weren't you? There is an excellent stream there for meditation. It can easily pass for a shower. The demon found a way out of this difficult situation. Exactly. Eh, Karama, what would I do without you? Although I know that I would have died on the first mission in a fight with Sabuza along with the entire seventh team. The Jinchuriki muttered bashfully. The fox smiled warmly and sent the Uzumaki an emotion of gratitude. Naruto ran to his favorite clearing, sadly noting that after just five minutes of running he was out of breath. Moving in dashes of two hundred meters, 
alternating them with calm steps of 100 meters, Uzumaki reached the dear and beloved 13th training ground. It was empty, and even overgrown with weeds, which greatly pleased our hero if the training ground is abandoned, then obviously no one will appear here. Naruto went to the stream and happily washed off the fizzy brew, thoroughly rinsing his hair he did not plan to dye it green. Kurama, do you want to go for a walk? Uzumaki asked with cunning in his voice. QB immediately perked up and wagged his tails playfully. Naturally! The demon exclaimed in anticipation of the long-awaited freedom. The Jinchuriki made the seals, bit his finger and summoned a miniature nine-tailed monster. We are a mile from Kanoha. This is the farthest training ground. If you remain quiet, no one will find us. The Jinchuriki promised. You promised to let me go hunting. Reminded the little fox. For God's sake, just don't catch people's eyes except in an animal form of adequate size. Uzumaki warned his friend. What if I do get caught? The demon inquired. Transfer back to me, but then you'll have to lie low, so it's better not to get caught. The Jinchuriki repeated the warning once again. Hi. The little fox nodded and ran into the bushes, enlarging along the way to the size of a large fox. Naruto began to stretch his muscles and pump chakra through incredibly narrow channels, trying to at least slightly increase the volume available to him. An hour later, deciding that a little more and his control center would burn out from overload, the Jinchuriki took a deep breath, closed his eyes and made a seal. Kage Bunshin no Jutsu. With a quiet pop, his copy appeared in front of Naruto. The Jinchuriki timidly opened one eye and saluted with his fist in the air. Hooray! The clone chuckled and high-fived his creator. Well, buddy, we have a damn lot of work ahead of us. The Jinchuriki exclaimed with fake enthusiasm. I understand. The clone poked himself in the belly and sighed sadly. Uzumaki began the craziest physical training in the life of this body. Naruto did three sets of ten push-ups, five sets of twenty squats, a five-kilometer run, and an hour of meditation. The clone had been storming the oak tree all this time, trying to climb to the top using the chakra in his feet. That was too much. The clone blurted out, breathing heavily. Agree. Thank you for your help. Naruto made a seal and recalled the clone, after which fatigue simply slammed the fat man into the ground. It seemed to the Jinchuriki that he had already lost a couple of kilos all his clothes were thoroughly wet, and his muscles were buzzing like a bell. Karama, how are you doing? The Jinchuriki contacted his friend via mental connection. Excellent, I caught two birds with one stone. The demon's voice, full of deepest satisfaction, rang out in the Jinchuriki's head. Well done! You definitely won't die of hunger in the forest. The guy groaned quietly, and the fox answered him with an offended snort. Ready to go home? Uzumaki asked. Naruto, can you leave me in the forest for the night? The fox asked cautiously, who was in no way satisfied with such a meager meal. Are you sure this is a good idea? Naruto asked with doubt in his voice. Absolutely. I'm removing all traces. Don't worry about conspiracy. The Bija hastened to defend his point of view. Well, okay, good luck to you. Naruto decided that the QB knew what it was doing it had almost never let him down in the past. Even if he gets caught, no one will think that the fox is sealed in the Hokage's sun. And you! The fox interrupted the mental connection and contentedly scratched his belly full of hair with his claws. Naruto grunted, got to his feet with great difficulty, and went home. It was already getting dark, so the mother would probably be worried, and a worried Kushina was worse than a hungry Kyubi.